Hey, Dustin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. How you doing today? I have a quick one for you. I'll make this one super simple. Uh, I get this question a lot. Dustin, how do I build a dividend portfolio? What considerations should I have? You know, which stocks should I choose? Things like that. Well, there's really no wrong way to do it. Everybody's going to have their sort of flavor of how they like to build things, but um, let's just go through it, right? Let's just come up with a couple ideas. None of this is right. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying, here's a way to do it. Maybe this helps. And if it doesn't, we'll try a different one and we'll do a different way. But um, the first thing I thought, all right, let's say that I'm an, uh, just an average person out there. I don't have lots of tools available to me. What would I think? And the first thing I thought is, well, I would want to find dividend paying stocks that, uh, you know, assuming that yield was my only focus. I would want to find these stocks that pay at least or yield more than inflation. Inflation came in at 1.3%. You just know it's going higher, but let's just say it's 1.3%. It's the only number we have to go on right now. So I would start by sorting the S&P by dividend yield and I'd get rid of everything that did not pay more than inflation or did not yield more than inflation, I should say it right. So anyways, there would be 247 at the moment stocks, so about half the S&P yields more than uh, inflation, so you get rid of half right off the top there. Um, next thing I would do is look for volatility. I'm going to show you a little scary chart here. It's a scatter plot. That's all 247 stocks. I took the extra time and put a little something fancy there for you. Um, I would plot them by volatility. And really all you're looking at here is down on the bottom you've got yield, no yield. Remember we said it's got to be at least 1.3%, so there's nothing over here, which is correct. And then this is the higher yield, right? So we're going over to whatever, 9%. The highest yielding stocks, just about 8%. And then what we're doing is we're comparing that to volatility, right? So without looking at numbers or anything, you're just saying, look, if, if a stock was down here, that's okay. That means low volatility. If I want a higher yield, I go that way. So these are the lowest volatile stocks with the highest yield. So that's what I would do. And then I would just start hovering over these and saying, all right, well, which ones do I like? What do I know? You could also break them into quadrants. So if we were to actually take all of those and divide them into four quadrants from those having the highest volatility, lowest yield, lowest volatility, lowest yield, highest volatility, highest yield, and lowest volatility, lowest or highest yield. Uh, so that's what you would get if you divided those almost evenly across the board. It's a little bit off if I'm honest with you there. And that's because I couldn't figure out how to get the last numbers to tick this thing to the left. I got frustrated and said, forget it. Uh, so anyways, you would likely think, all right, if I don't want volatility, I want to be over here. Right? I want the highest yielding stocks with the lowest volatility. If I don't care about volatility, well, I still want the highest yield. Right, we, That's what we're searching for. So I, you would say anything to the right of this line, any of those stocks would do. You'd basically say that, I don't know, unless I needed a lot of diversification or I find out that all of these happen to be retail stocks or something, then all right, I wouldn't really incorporate these. Why would I take lower yield for the same volatility as these uh, or lower yield with lower volatility, uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense. I got my, I got the same volatility. I get higher yield over here. So it's one way to look at it. You don't have to use a fancy chart, but you could do that. Here's the problem. Uh, you're going to come across this and I'll leave this one to you to decide how you handle it. The problem is if you start getting too picky and you say, I want these bad boys over here, I want the highest yield with the lowest possible volatility. I'll take that one, 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 that one. All right. Here's what that looks like. Uh, unfortunately, the top 10 stocks with the highest yield and the lowest volatility are pretty much utilities. So if you don't mind being focused in the utility sector, which could be a tough one because you got rates, you know, rates are going up. That's going to hurt these guys to some degree. OK, but this is your choice. Um, the, the nine of the top 10 stocks with the lowest volatility and the highest yield happen to be in utilities, uh, that sector. And then you have Verizon. Everybody ha happens to have Verizon in their um, dividend portfolio. It's a staple, right? So there you go. That tells you you're going to have to get creative. Think about this for a second. If you could have 10 stocks, you equally weighted them 10% uh, of your portfolio each. You wouldn't go with all these because you'd all be in utilities. If rates so much as ticked even a little bit higher, these stocks would hurt you, maybe even offsetting your yield. I, I don't know that I'd play that game. So what you're going to do is you're going to say, I want the highest yield, but I realize these are some utility stocks in here. A lot of them are right in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 10% of that, 10% of that, 10% of that, 10% of this guy, 10% of this guy, 10% of this guy, and the rest down in here. 
right? The lowest of the lowest. What are you doing? In that case, you're building a portfolio that's not all in utilities, but it's not all high volatility. You have some that can wiggle around and be a little spooky sometimes, but you're getting the higher yield. And then you have most of them down here that are just Verizon, just slow and steady, gonna wiggle around a little bit, but it ain't going, you know, they're not going out of business anytime soon, uh, especially selling off uh, Yahoo and AOL. So you've got that combination. So you didn't build a speedboat, you built sort of like a 40 foot fun yacht. You didn't build a super yacht that's gonna go super slow and turn and all that, you get what I'm saying. So that's one way to look at it. Just thought I'd share that with you. A quick one, like I told you, that's what we do here. If you like the quick ones, that's what this series is called, Fin Tips. Hope you'll subscribe, check us out. There's even a playlist. You can, I mean, you can sort through them, see what's going on there. And uh, hope you enjoy. See ya.